Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is LC. Today, I want to talk about how to estimate fair value of a stock by using highest average and lowest average of PE of the particular stock for a defined period and together with PE chart. Before we progress to the exciting part, let's take two or three minutes to recap PE multiple just to keep us aligned. PE multiple is a ratio for valuing a company that measures its current share price relative to its per share earnings. Another form of formula is market capitalization relative to its net income available for common shareholders. Both will yield the same result. A PE20 suggests that investors in the stocks are willing to pay $20 for $1 of earnings that the company generates. In general, high PE multiple may indicate the market is expecting big things over the next few months or years. All things being equal, a $10 stock with a PE 75 is much more expensive than a $100 stock with PE of 20. This video is not about explaining PE multiple in depth. If you want to learn more about valuation multiples, please leave me a comment below. I personally use PE multiple as one of my valuation multiples. But I prefer to express PE in percentage, which is called earning yield. Earning yield and PE are siblings. I will cover earning yield in near future. Next, to estimate fair value of a stock with PE multiple, here is the formula. To get the fair value, you need to determine the value you want to use for earning per share and PE multiple. For earning per share, you can do simple forecasting, partial or complete financial modeling to estimate earnings per share. This is a huge topic by itself. If you want to learn more about this, please leave me a comment below. If you don't know how to estimate earnings per share, one good alternative you can use is to take rolling four quarter earnings per share or trailing 12 months TTM earnings per share. How does it work? You can go to Busan, Malaysia. Let's say we search for financial results. Search for Maybank. Open the last four quarters financial results. All right. Take the current year quarter, the individual period, earnings per share, sum up for all these figures. You will get rolling four quarter earnings per share. Alternatively, you can get the same figure in Wall Street Journal. Right? You go to the, let's say you search main Maybank, you will get this uh, earning per share TTN, 73 cent. Uh, you can get similar figure in Equity Striker, Diner Quest, and Busan, Malaysia, uh, Busan Marketplace. Um, this method sounds overly simple. But 
honestly speaking, based on my experience, this is a very good alternative if you don't know how to do estimation. There are cases where I don't know how to estimate earnings per share of a company. I personally will use this method, of course with slight tweaking. The next one, the focus of today, PE multiple. There are few common ways to get the fair PE multiple. First, you can get average PE multiples from a set of other companies in the same industries. For instance, let's say in DynaQuest, let's um, do a filtering by sector. Let's say by food, beverage and tobacco and we select package food. Yeah. You can get average of P multiples of these 16 companies. Okay, this PER is PE uh, multiple. Here is another example. Let's say you want to filter uh, by real estate and by real estate development. You can get average of P multiples uh, for more than uh, of more than 40 companies. Here I just want to give you a simple illustration on how this works so you get the basic idea. Uh, I hope that after watching this video, you won't simply take average PE of one industry in this way. In practical, it is not as easy as what I shown you. We will discuss peer comparison, peer comparison in more details in the future. What is the main challenge with this method? The main challenge is the set of public companies could be very small. For instance, Busa. Busa is the one and only public listed stock exchange in Malaysia. Busa has no peer in Malaysia. Well, we can argue that why not compare Busa with other public listed stock exchange in other countries? Uh, however, it may not be apple to apple comparison because of different in regulation, government policies and economic conditions. Another example is Carlsberg and Henneken, for instance. Taking a median or average of two companies, P multiple, is definitely not meaningful. Of course, in this example, their multiples are quite close. Other examples are like Petronas Gas, Petronas Chemical, Vitrox, and Carex. Just to add on, Carlsberg and Henneken, basically they are brothers. So most of the time they will, their stock prices uh, and also their business performance are quite aligned with each other. So that's why their PE are quite close. Another method to find the fair PE multiple is uh, using some mathematics models such as absolute PE model. <clears throat> I tested this method before, but I'm not a big fan. You can research this method if you're interested. The next method is to determine a reasonable range of PE multiples of a stock. By looking back three years, five years, seven years or even 10 years. I personally use five years at most to, to determine range of PE. Let's take a look 
of this Excel. The first six columns are stock prices of Maybank, date, open, high, low, close, and volume. I have provided the link of tuto tutorial below on how to import stock prices into Excel. I suggest you go through the video if you haven't done so. We have another table um, with earnings per share by financial year. In this price table, we have a column column called earnings per share which map with earning per share in this table by financial year accordingly the last column is PE multiple which is uh, take the close price divided by earning per share as at 31st March 2018, rolling four quarter earning per share of Maybank was 0 0.7194. Alright, we have all the necessary data here. We have to get a range of PE multiple of five years. What is the general concept of getting a range of a set of values? Basically, we take average of a set of data and then we calculate a spread. You often see this kind of expression in report or newspaper. To get average, you can either use mean or median. If you use mean, you have to use standard deviation to get the spread. If you use median, you have to use percentile to get the spread. I personally use median rather than mean because extreme values do not affect median as strong as they do the mean. Okay, you have probably returned this to your beloved mathematics teacher that's all right just memorize this in this excel both median and mean table provide high and low average we can estimate buy price and sell price with this information. Here is the formula. Buy price equal to earning per share times low PE. Selling price is earning per share times uh, high PE. For example, to estimate sell price for Maybank, we take the high lever average, multiply with the rolling four quarter earning per share, 0 0.7194. Then we will get this number, 9.52. This is the sell price. For buy price, take the low average to multiply with the rolling four quarter earning per share then we will get 8.64 same concept applied to this table for visualization we plot PE chart to show the movement of PE also we plot the high average and the lows average in the chart. In, in, in theory, again, I say theory, if PE exceeds the highest average, this indicates 
a sign of overvalue. If PE drop below the lowest average, this indicates the stock is undervalued. I have another two examples. This example uses DG. The buy price is 4.24. The sell price is 4.95. So, so far, DG's PE has been moving within the range. As at 20th July 2018, its PE was 23.29 and the stock price uh, was 4.54. So its PE now is very close to the median. Uh, one key takeaway here is, uh, generally speaking, some premium stocks tend to be traded at very high PE. So you, you can't simply apply uh, P8, 10, 12 to value this kind of premium stocks. Another example is high O. If we use the median table, a range of fair value is from 2.18 to 3.58. But for mean, the range is from 1.94 to 4.05. The range is much wider due to extreme values. This is what I meant with the extreme values. Let's uh, check out this, this PE chart. All right. You, you can study the catalyst that have been driving high O's PE so high. In this case, um, you should be cautious because now the PE uh, was in no man's land. My style leans toward conservative. Uh, in this case, I will monitor whether high O can maintain its premium PE or not. Perhaps I can realize some more profits by selling some shares of high O. Before I end this video, I could not stress this enough. You need to analyze growth drivers and challenges of the company and never forget to apply margin of safety. Never invest or trade stock by following buy sell price and just using the PE chart. Valuation is just one bit in the decision making process. I have posted a video to guide you how to create a PE chart in Excel. Also, you can download this Excel by clicking the links in the video description. If you enjoyed the video, give me a like and share it out. If you didn't, a dislike. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one.